Hi, I'm Kevin Tracy from ktracy.com, and today we're reviewing a generic set of 36 twin tip brush markers from Hobby Lobby, which is the largest set that they offer, by the way. I used these to color the second page of my webcomic, and I'll be showing that finished product at the end of this video and linking to the time lapse video of me doing that if you want to see more of these brushes in action. If you just want to see the rest of the webcomic or my other art or cool merch, check out ktracy.com when this video is over. I've got a lot of cool stuff over there. Product plugs. Anyways, on to the markers. I wanted to try these out because they look to be of a lot better quality than Crayola and the crazy art markers for kids that I've used in the past, which I absolutely despise buys for artwork. In fact, aside from dry erase boards and highlighters, those markers for kids are the only markers I have ever used, and I hate them. And that was a long time ago. So if this drawing of my dog comes out looking anything like it came out of my dog, uh, <laughs> it's not necessarily the marker's fault. And for that matter, too, I've never actually drawn a dog before, so again, if this looks like crap, it's not the marker's fault. Of course, my preference here would have been to buy a huge set of Copic markers, or is it Copec? It doesn't matter. The problem is that in order for me to do that, I would have to take out a second mortgage on my house in order to buy them. And I don't think my wife or my bank would approve of a loan for a bunch of markers that I'm not even sure how to pronounce correctly. Anyways, this is my first time working with brush markers, and to be honest, I was expecting brush markers to have small little bristle tips at the end of them, and these don't. They only have a very long and very flexible foam tip. However, I was actually pretty happy with the benefits of this the moment I began coloring the page of the comic, and even now I still appreciate it. The tips are so incredibly accurate. It makes them awesome for doing detail work in a slightly more detailed or difficult adult coloring book like the MS Paint comic, Painting North Korea Red, available at ktracy.com and Amazon Prime. Ha <laughs> ha! Product plug. <laughs> Anyways, the, the foam tips behave like markers when I want them to behave like markers. And even more impressively, they behave like brushes when I want them to behave like brushes. The only problem I had with the accuracy of these brushes is that they were so easy to use that they can easily lull me into a sense of complacency as I'm actually putting pigment on the paper. There were a couple times I went over lines when I was doing the coloring book because I literally looked away and started thinking about something entirely else. I can't really blame the markers for that though. It just means that they're really comfortable to use and encourage you to become really confident in your skills really quickly. This is only my second time using these markers and the first time being the comic page, so I'm still new at these. And speaking of comfort, you may see me cracking my knuckles or stretching out my hands once or twice as this video goes on. And yes, my hands and arms were cramping a little bit, but that was after over six hours of continuous use. Normal pencils and pens normally do that to me after 30 minutes. You might be able to tell from the video that these Hobby Lobby brush markers have a triangular prism-like shape to them that is slightly rounded around the edges. It just makes them really nice to hold. And this is a really nice set of markers, but let me warn you that these are definitely not children's markers. I wouldn't give these to preteens who aren't getting into an adult coloring book thing as a hobby. If they're any younger or if they aren't serious about a coloring hobby, I doubt these will be used well. In fact, I have doubts about their ability to withstand the kind of abuse that children would throw at these the first time they pick them up. Towards the end of this video, you're going to see me kind of pinching the tips of the markers. And that's because the tips are starting to get a little bit raggedy as I try to use them for blending and that involves a lot of use and then a lot of the coloring over existing pigment. So if you color one stroke at a time, these are really fantastic and that's what I did for the coloring book. But when you start going over an area multiple times, I really don't think these are going to hold up that well. And I can't think of a child under 11 years old who can appreciate that. So on the one hand, these aren't for kids, but on the other... They're not for professionals either. These Hobby Lobby twin tip markers are water-based and blending them is a chore and sometimes impossible. I thought I might have better luck using a, a water brush because these are, these almost put paint down like uh, painting with watercolor pens, but 
the pigment goes into the paper almost immediately. Even when coloring large areas with the same exact color, these markers have virtually no work time. So you're going to see some darker lines when the lines you're putting down are beginning to overlap. And you'll see that in the comic page that I show you at the end of this review. And that's going to happen though with any water-based marker. So no matter how careful you are, it's going to happen. It's worth noting that this was a lot more noticeable though when I colored the comic on a 100 pound cardstock versus this drawing, which I'm doing on on watercolor paper. So if you want to try to mitigate that, you might be able to do that. Another way you might be able to mitigate this is by putting down multiple layers of color over top of one another. But not only gets back to the damage I felt like I was doing when I was putting the marker tips over existing pigment, but it actually touches on another problem too. These colors are really rich and dense, and that might seem good, but of the 36 colors that you're given in this package, the only ones I would classify as a light color are the lightest gray and the neon yellow. And even the colors like light lavender purple would be something that I would only use for the shadow of a lavender flower. If there's a way to make these markers appear lighter, please by all means let me know in the comments. I have found no way to blend these into the white of the paper. In many cases, putting down a second coat of color will simply make the color too dark or too dense. Plus, if you are putting down this much pigment, you're not going to be able to create a shading effects with the same color because that color will only get so dense before all you're doing is putting pigment on top of pigment. So unless I'm doing something wrong, these simply aren't going to give you that incredible manga or comic print quality that you're probably looking for as a professional. And if you see I'm doing something wrong, again, please let me know in the comments. I would love to get that type of quality out of something I was able to pick up for only $19.99. Finally, these water-based markers did blur my inkjet printed lines a little bit on that comic page, especially with the lighter colors like yellow and flesh and that light gray. This wasn't as noticeable with darker colors, but that kind of makes sense. However, with that said, this is going to be a problem with any water-based marker that you pick up. So that's not a knock against these, but if you're considering water-based markers of any kind for use with your inkjet printer, do keep that in mind. I did try these markers on a spare coloring book page that my wife doodles in for our comic conventions, and I did not see the same bleed issue. So if you're looking to buy something for coloring the MS Paint comic painting North Korea Red or any other professional comic book, uh, this would be an awesome choice. The bleed issues are entirely to do with the fact that I wanted an oversized print for my page, and I used my home inkjet printer to make that 11 by 17 print. So that is not going to be an issue for most coloring books. It will be an issue if you're printing things out at home and you only have an inkjet printer. The biggest differences between these and the cheap markers from Crayola or other brands are just how easily this pigment goes down and how long these seem to last for if you treat them well. Had I tried to color an 11 by 17 page of the comic and then followed up with this portrait of my dog, the Crayola markers would have died or at least dried out for a time while I let them rest and recharge with the cap on. These markers stayed moist the entire time I was using them and provided a consistent working quality that I never had to worry about. And yes, somebody did dare me to say the word moist in a video. So challenge accepted and won. However, I do mean what I said. These markers performed exactly the same way after 14 hours of use as they did when I first opened them, regardless of how long I was using them for. So while they're not professional markers, they're actually pretty great hobbyist markers, and I think they're awesome for coloring books. $19.99 might seem like a bit of a steep price for only 36 generic markers, but I think they're worth the price tag when compared to kids' brands. I only wish they had a larger set with a few lighter or less dense colors to make blending to white a little bit easier. Okay, now for the nitty gritty stuff. I am not 100% sure these aren't non-toxic. They probably are, but I'm not 100% sure. Usually when you buy art supplies that are non-toxic, they specifically say that they're non-toxic on the packaging. And there's a California law that requires a warning label for potentially hazardous materials, which isn't on here either. The front of the package does, however, state that it conforms to ASTM D4236, which means that all the hazardous materials in the package are listed. 
but there's nothing listed, which means that it's either non-hazardous or it's lying about ASTM D4236 compliance. If these are non-toxic, by saying simply conforms to ASTM D4236 is an epic marketing failure. I want to know that I'm using non-toxic material and putting that on there almost sounds like there should be a warning label on there and they just forgot to put it in the bag. For what is worth, though, these markers didn't have any kind of noticeable odor while I was using them, and I'm an asthmatic, so I'm somewhat sensitive to that. Now, granted, I didn't try shoving these up my nose or tasting them either. Even if they were labeled as non-toxic, I think doing that would just be a really stupid idea anyway. Also, in case this is important for you, they don't advertise this online, but this marker set was made in China. And I'm always disappointed when I see that, not only as a red-blooded American, but especially from Hobby Lobby. You would hope that a Christian company like Hobby Lobby would source manufacturing for its generic goods to a country that didn't actively persecute Christians. But then again, I bought these markers, and I usually don't look to see where something is from before I buy it. So in reality, I am just as guilty as they are for being an ignorant consumer when it comes to this. But if you can look past that, these are actually a really great set of adult or responsible teen hobbyist markers. They don't blend well, but they don't bleed either. Although the 0.4 millimeter tip is meant for accuracy, with a steady hand, the 3.5 millimeter brush can be just as accurate. And that's what I used 99.9% .9 of the time I was using these. Plus, they're just really comfortable to use. And I've covered a lot of area with these markers and they're still working just like I opened the package. But if you're going to get these, you may want to shop around for another set of markers for something that has some lighter colors in there too to make up for the very rich and very dense colors in this package. You can use this package with other water-based markers and it shouldn't be a problem. But those rich colors, they're not necessarily bad. And you can see that here kind of with any medium, if you work to the strengths of the tools that you have, you can create some really interesting and really great art. I chose to work around this, and I drew my Irish and Wheaton Terrier mix in a Super Bloom style. And I don't know about you, but I think it came out looking pretty good. I think it captures his happy-go-lucky and loving personality pretty well. Let me know what you think in the comments. And that's it for my review. If you have any questions, feel free to leave that comment or message me at ktracy.com. And if you like these videos, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's actually very important for the YouTube logarithm nerdy stuff, so you'd really be helping me out if you did. Well, anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next week.